Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. I hope you are doing well. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about whether or not it's possible to destroy a power system component by underpowering our radio controlled vehicle. Now the quick and easy answer to this question is yes, it's entirely possible to destroy a power system component by underpowering your radio controlled vehicle. Before we talk about how and why this is, I wanna make sure that we're on the same page for understanding what it means to underpower a vehicle. If you were to consider both a radio controlled car as well as a radio controlled airplane, both of these vehicles have a minimum and maximum amount of power input that they require to hit a certain performance mark. Now for the airplane, it's gonna be very critical on that minimum performance mark. That minimum is essentially going to represent the minimum amount of power required to sustain flight for that plane, where the car is going to be a little bit different. The minimum amount of performance required is gonna be based on achieving a certain specific amount of performance. Going under that mark is not necessarily dangerous for the radio controlled car as much as it is for the radio controlled airplane for more or less obvious reasons. Now, if you were to be underpowering that radio controlled airplane, you would be picking power systems that would line up with the bottom end of that performance or power input range. Now, if you were to do the same thing for a radio controlled car, you would be playing around with that minimum specification or even anywhere underneath of it. Let's talk about a radio control car and use that as an example to understand how it's possible to destroy a component. Now imagine that you have a 50 to 80 mile an hour radio controlled vehicle and you only want to see an expected amount of speed of 30 miles an hour for that specific vehicle. Now essentially what you realize is that you don't need the kind of power that the guys are running to achieve the 50 to 80 miles an hour. So what you end up doing is you look for a brushless motor that is gonna be small smaller in size in order to put out less amount of power because you're not going for that kind of power levels. Now the difference is you can find lots of radio controlled brushless motors on the market that's gonna come in a smaller package that can fit your requirements and you probably can still figure out a way to bolt that right into your vehicle. Now where the difference lies is the actual specifications of the motor. What you're probably gonna find is that a smaller brushless motor is gonna come with a completely different range for the KV value of that motor. In fact, what's gonna happen is the KV value for those smaller motors is actually going to shift upward. So instead of it being, let's make up an example here, 1,000 to 4,000 RPM is the typical range for a motor. If you go to a smaller motor, you may actually be seeing somewhere around 2,500 to 6,000. What does this now mean for us installing this motor into our application? Well, if we don't play around with the gearing so that we can actually achieve the 30 miles an hour that we're trying to target, we're going to see a big problem with this specific motor used in our radio control vehicle. What happens in this example is we purchase that motor that is going to be a smaller compact size. We don't really understand what the KV value means or what it's supposed to be for this particular vehicle. What we do is we install that motor into our radio control vehicle and because it's smaller and puts out much less power, we're gonna expect that it's gonna go only 30 miles an hour and we're gonna hit our target and everything's gonna be okay. But what we didn't realize is that that KV value, instead of being what it's actually required, for a typical configuration within that vehicle, we went with a smaller motor that has a higher KV, meaning that it's going to try and put out more power than the actual motors that were designed to fit in that specific vehicle. The problem with this is the smaller motor is not gonna be able to put out more power and it's going to overheat and burn out. Now this is also true for not just the motor, but the speed control as well as the battery pack that you're selecting for this power system. If the speed control that you purchase for this new brushless motor is actually smaller, you're gonna be pulling more power from it because of that higher KV that we just selected in order to get a smaller motor size and you're gonna have the same problem with that speed control. It's gonna be on the verge of burning out. And the same idea would apply for our battery pack. If you ended up scaling that down, you're gonna be pulling more power from that and it's gonna be at risk. So essentially what you have here is three components within your power system is now going to be significantly stressed and you don't even know about that. Now what happens in this case is that one of those components will ultimately fail first and it's going to be the 
weakest link. That component can take another component out with it, but it's not always the case. Either way, it's going to be bad news for that hobbyist. Now, an interesting example actually happened when I was at the local flying field. I watched this guy take off his brand new custom built wooden airplane. It barely got off the ground. It was flying around at just above the stall speed. It made about four or five laps. And then all of a sudden, it sounded like the motor came down a notch in RPM and maybe even the voltage cutoff kicked in, I'm not even certainly sure, and that plane hit its stall speed and then stalled, spiraled to the ground and crashed. Now it's never fun to go and help a fellow pilot pick up the pieces of his radio controlled airplane just after it went for the maiden flight and ended up crashing. But at the very least, after being asked, I wanted to help be able to find out what happened with this power system that led to the ultimate crash. After looking at everything, it was very clear that the speed control and the motors were actually okay. They were not hitting high temperatures. However, what we did notice about the battery pack is that it puffed up, it ballooned, it got extremely hot, and it was actually run too long for the amount of capacity that that battery actually had. And it was only about four or five passes of a fairly large field at a fairly slow pace. Now the entire intent of this specific build was to place a small battery pack into the airplane to make it as light as possible. But at the same time, putting in the smallest battery pack, that battery pack wasn't actually up to the job or the task of delivering the required power to the motor. The ultimate worst case scenario would have been a fire on board if that battery pack actually would have exploded while it was in flight. That didn't happen. What ended up happening is it got really hot, it puffed up like a balloon, and it ended up running out of gas essentially because the whole entire capacity was depleted. So not only did the battery pack fail and is no longer usable, but now the plane is also no longer usable. That's a tough loss for a mistake in selecting the actual power system for the airplane. Another example of how it's possible that you can actually destroy a power system component by underpowering your radio control vehicle. In this case, it was the battery pack that was underpowered for the task that it had to do. Now going over these points is extremely important to understand what is happening within our power system. Now I know that a bunch of you have sent me messages because you aren't interested in hitting what those radio control vehicles are intended in terms of the performance and you want a lesser performance from them. That is totally fine. You can build a power system that can underpower the radio control car. The problem is it needs to be sourced correctly because you're now going into a completely different realm and that's where we get into all of the problems. Much like the battery pack, that is a very avoidable situation. Instead of underpowering the battery pack, we can beef it up a little bit so that it can handle the specific power system that is installed within it. And better yet, you can actually run that power system on land before taking it up in the air and seeing if it has an issue. And on the other hand, for our radio control car example that we ran through, it is totally fine to expect a lesser amount of speed than that radio control vehicle was rated for. The way that you get there is you have to make sure that the tire speed is going to be slower. It has to hit that 30 miles an hour as opposed to the 50 miles an hour using that typical power system. And the way that you can do that is you can perform the calculation that will allow you to estimate the amount of speed that you would get out of that power system. In general, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your total amount of RPM is gonna drop. You can either do that by change in voltage or change in KV value, or you can also do it through gearing. There's lots of different steps that you can achieve the same end goal or result. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you were able to get some insight as to picking a power system for your specific goals if it is less than the actual performance range that that specific vehicle was intended for. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, it means a lot to me, and I'll see you in the next one.